Hi and welcome back. In our previous tutorial, we saw how to write a simple JSP and um, write some Java code in it. This kind of script tags and uh, Java code inside script tags sometimes throw people off. Uh, we know that in Java, everything is a class. So if you're a Java veteran and you're uh, new to JSP, you might ask what's happening here? Where is the class? Um, there are a couple of experiments that we can conduct to understand this in a bit more detail. Uh, let me do one uh, one small change here first. We have a method here inside the definition tag that I had explained earlier. What happens if I take this method and um, I remove that out and then I put it inside this tag itself? So this is a simple uh, script tag. It's not inside a method definition tag. Now what happens? And I already see that uh, Eclipse is throwing me an error, but I'll ignore it and uh, press save. Let me try refreshing. There you go. We have a exception. And uh, the exception is uh, it should, it returned as a status 500, which makes sense. This is how uh, the web application handles it. Now look at the error here. It says this syntax on token pin brace is not expected, a semicolon is expected. So this is commonly found when you cannot uh, define a method. So it's, it's complaining that it cannot have a method definition here. It's, it's having a problem with this open brace. Now, okay, now this is, this is one thing. Let me revert this back to how it was before. Yeah, so now we have this again. Uh, let's make sure that everything is fine. Yes, everything is back to how it was before. Now, there's one other thing that I can do here, and uh, we'll first do that and we'll try to analyze how that works. Now, let me open up a new uh, script tag. Again, I can open up as many of these as I want. I will have, I'll write a for loop here. to close this here. Now inside the for loop, I'll say out dot println. Let me put a break here. i equals. I'll just print the value of i. Save. Now when I refresh this, I see the value of i getting printed here which is fine. But now I'll make one more change here. We know that uh, the static value can be removed out. So I don't want to print this inside an out.println. So what I'll do is I will delete this line and um, I'll close this script tag. So inside the script tag, we just have a for loop open but it's not closed yet so i'll have another script tag where the for loop is closed here's the closing brace let me remove this and this okay so what i've done here is i have put two script tags one where the for loop is open with an open uh, flowery brace and the other script tag with the for loop closed this works you know, we, uh, the compiler sees this as the closing brace of this one. So now what's interesting is if I type some value here, let me put the same text here. And then um, I use the equal to i value, which is the person equals where I'm printing out the value of i. Now notice what happens. It's still printing that. So uh, let me make a change here so that we know the effect. No, 
okay there you go so this is interesting we have a script tag and we have Java code inside it and now we have a simple HTML text we also have this print where we are uh, printing on the value here but the Java code to close this for loop which is this closing brace is inside a different uh, script tag and the text in between these two script tags are getting executed as if it were a part of this Java code so to explain these two behaviors you know the first behavior is you cannot have methods inside these script tags and the second behavior is you can have text inside in between script tags and then they are actually treated as if they are a part of the Java code and the script itself in order to explain these two behaviors let me explain how the JSP actually works well if you haven't guessed it already it's uh, the way it works is this JSP is actually converted to a class so this whole test or JSP you see here is actually converted to a Java class by Tomcat and uh, Tomcat executes this Java class now what is a Java class that gets that gets uh, generated by this JSP it's actually a servlet so every JSP is actually a different way to write a servlet and once you save the JSP and deploy it Tomcat takes this JSP and then converts it into a servlet and it's actually the servlet that runs now if you had to write the same functionality inside a servlet all these code if you had to write it inside a servlet how would you do it you would write all these inside a do get method obviously because we are using a get method here because uh, we are not passing any values and it's not a post so the default value is a get method so that's exactly what Tomcat does as well every code inside a scriptlet is actually converted to code inside a do get method so it takes all this code whatever you write inside a scriptlet takes all these code and adds it to a do get method that it generates for the servlet class that it generates for this JSP now what happens to these uh, static text that's coming up in between the way Tomcat treats it is this say this br for example or this text the value of k is so this has to directly go to the output so how would you do it you would obviously put it inside a out dot println I'm sorry the print writer dot println so that's exactly what Tomcat does as well it takes the print writer and then it passes all these text into the output stream and that's how we get this output here now you should be able to understand why we cannot put this method declaration inside the script tag because all this code is going into a do get now if you put a method de definition inside the script tag then even the method definition goes inside a do get and that's the reason why we got the error here earlier saying that we cannot have a method definition because obviously you cannot have a method defined inside another method that's the reason why we put this other tag which is a definition tag whatever code you put inside the definition tag stays outside the do get and this forms a separate method definition inside the class now let's have a look at the servlet that gets generated by this JSP we can actually look that up inside the Tomcat folder now let me open up the Apache Tomcat installation now Tomcat generates the servlets and deploys it in a temporary folder uh, which is different from the folder where uh, we have our application where we've deployed it so this temporary folder is called work and uh, this might be different depending on the version of Tomcat that you're using but it, it should be, I think it should be called work anyway so here we have our local host and uh, there we go here's a simple server project and uh, look at the package name that's given it's org apache jsp and here you go we have our test JSP .java and test JSP class. so our test JSP that we have written here has been converted to test underscore JSP .java and it is in the org Apache JSP package and it's also compiled it and it has the test JSP class and that's what's executing and rendering this output now let's have a look at what test JSP Java looks like 
Okay, uh, I've increased the font a bit here. So we can see there is this package which auto generated. It's org.apache.jsp. All our uh, JSPs converted to servlets will have this package. Now, it has a few imports which is required. Again, these are servlet imports. And now you have a public final class test JSP. This is the name that we're going to get. It's the JSP name underscore JSP. That's the name of the servlet. And it extends a class called HTTP JSP base. We will look at what this class is in a little while, but uh, have a look at this. Now we have a method here. This method was there in our uh, definition tag, and this method actually becomes a part of this class that's generated because of this JSP. Now let's look at a few other things here. We have a init and destroy. Let's not worry about that as of now. We have a service. Uh, this service acts as a common method for the do get and the do post because here when we write our code inside the JSP, we are not actually telling Tomcat whether this has to be inside a do get or inside a do post. So what Tomcat does is whatever code you put in the JSP, instead of putting it inside both the do get and the do post because we don't know which one we are actually looking at, what it does instead is it puts inside this JSP service and this JSP service forms a, you know, it, it catches both the get and the post methods and it does have all the code that we have written here. So uh, here we have some initial text, don't worry about that as of now. Here you can see it has a out.write and this out.write is there for every static line that we have inside our JSP. So here you see we have uh, a doc type, which is a static line. We have not come to this line yet. So just ignore it for now. We'll look at this in the next set of tutorials. But the static line, this is, this is where it's actually no different from the HTML that we saw. See, this is the HTML and uh, this is the JSP. So these are all HTML code. So all these HTML code have been converted to out.write. So these are actually going as Java statements and uh, each one of these statements have been converted. They have even been escaped. As you can see here, there are escape characters that have been added wherever required and they have been converted into simple Java statements. Now the non-static code here, now after all this code, and of course the definition we've already seen, now after all this code, here is this where the script starts. So these script statements are actually converted into direct statements inside the method, which is obvious because we want these to run. So, so no matter how many script tags you have here and code you have here, all these are going to get appended one after the other. And if you have uh, static lines of code in between, they get converted to out dot write. So this actually explains the other question that we had. How does this for loop work? So the way the for loop works is this script tag gets directly converted to one line of code inside the, inside the method, which is a for loop initiation. This static code, this one gets converted to out dot write. So as you can see here, all this gets converted to out dot write. And then when we are actually printing out this value of i, so it just has to print out the value of i. So uh, here you go, it just does out dot print of i and then the remaining code and then it catches and then it has the closing brace for this for loop. So you have a few catch and uh, finally blocks uh, of code also, but uh, let's not worry about that for now. So to get an overall idea of what's happening here is static code is uh, being converted to out dot write. The definition is being converted to a, you know methods inside the class, and then all these executable pieces of code inside the script tags are actually converted to code inside the service method, which gets executed on get and post.